Welcome to the DL Gaming Podcast. I'm Bobby. I'm Nick. I'm exhausted. It's been a super Happy long birthday, week. man. Oh, yeah, it is my birthday, too. You're like 25. Yeah. Congratulations. 44 <laughs> years old. Um, and I hope to be here, like, I don't know when this shit's, <laughs> this fucking, the wheels are going to fall off of this thing, but I hope to be, like, here at 55, 66, 77, You're like, you know, be here. As long as you guys listen, I'll fucking keep talking if you listen. <laughs> By the time you get to like 66 or 77, it's going to be like an AR version of you where like you're young again, <laughs> but you're going to actually be buff. As like you're going to be like 16, but you're not going to be like skinny 16, Amelia. Like you're actually going to be like yoked. Yeah. That's what it's going to be. I like it. <laughs> um, I, I think uh, either it's going to go that way or, you know, my brain is going to turn to much like my dad and I'll just be like... Um, I'll only be able to say by new Isaac like, for any answer, <laughs> which I almost, I'm almost there now, but you know, um, yeah, my, here's my, um, my day today. Got up, didn't sleep very much. Haven't slept all week, really. Uh, went to work for eight hours. That was the easiest day of my week was today. Luckily, because my brain is much, I, people were talking to me. I'm like, I don't know what you're saying. I put in 90 hours this week. And then uh, I got home, and then I uh, I went to sleep. That's what I did. And I woke up, and I'm here. So I made it. Wow. Yeah. It's going to be a big I paycheck. It. it is. And yeah. um, ooh, uh, here's a quick trip, a tip, if it's easy for you. And depending on, you know, a lot of factors, but for me it works out. You can go exempt on, like, certain checks and just, just like, get the whole check. So for this one, I'm going to go exempt and get the whole thing. So Wow. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, we got some other big news happening. Well, first, we got a new patron. That's big news. So thank you to Jamie coming in with the Patreon subscription. Uh, guys, if you want to subscribe to our Patreon, you can do that at our website, dlgaming.net. Probably the best way that you can support us there. If you subscribe for long enough, you get a T-shirt and other goodies. And we got those T-shirts going out now. A lot of people taking advantage of the, uh, of the uh, prizes there. Yeah, and we should be getting uh, stickers. Stickers are coming soon as well. Yeah, stickers. Cool. But also, the, the big, big news is uh, Christian and Amanda are not here today because they are at Christian's wedding. He's getting married. Not to each yeah, other. Yeah. No. no. Not to each other. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> nope. They are up there in Canada getting married, doing some camping, having a great time, posting pictures in the Discord. So check that out. Did you see the pic- some of the pictures, Bobby? Like it looks like the scene from Midsummer. Yeah, it does. You know, <laughs> like it just—it's just forests, a clearing, and, and a bunch of smiling people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just smiling blonde people. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much what's going on. Yeah. No, my favorite part of the without all the thing. death, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not yeah. enough hammers. Yeah. Um, I mean, things started favorite... pretty good in Midsummer and then took a turn. So we'll yeah. see. Yeah, it was all a free acid. <laughs> um, my favorite part of the whole, like the whole thing, like, cause there, if you join our discord, you can actually see like the posts from days and sniper. Um, one of my favorite things is that days posted, uh, a picture of her door when she got there and someone posted a pic, uh, like a, a sign that said USA refugee. And then her name. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think that was for her room or something or her cabin. It, yeah, I was laughing a little hard. I'm oh, like, wow. that probably was Sniper. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, are we ready to talk about some video games? I think yeah. so. If I fall asleep at some point, if I can just kick me over. All right. Well, hopefully it won't be that bad of a show. Ah! Kick, him, kick right. him in testicles. First game I want to talk about is the Cuphead DLC. Cuphead, the delicious last course, just came out recently on uh, June 30th. And this is... A DLC for seven ninety nine, and Cuphead came out a while ago, and I don't think there's been any updates or content since then. They had that TV show, um, but this creates a whole new map. There's new items, new bosses, new levels, and people are really enjoying it. The reviews are pretty stellar, and the price seems right as well. So it's, um, it, I, I read some of the reviews, and people were like, eh, it's pretty short, but it, you know, eight this. Eight bucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, eight bucks, and this. Type That's of, not bad at all for eight bucks. Yeah, and you got to imagine this type of game takes a lot of work too. So, have you guys seen? Have you guys seen the TV show? Yeah, I watched a few mm-hmm. episodes. Yeah, we talked about it when it, when yeah, it we, came out. It was all right. I think. 
do you think that the artist for the TV show, I mean, for the game, worked on the TV show, or did they just had like a completely different thing? Mm, I, I didn't think. Say. I didn't think the art on the TV show was as good, but I, I don't know. I didn't like the TV show that much. I thought it was just more for like little kids. I saw the interview yeah. with uh, one of the devs, and yeah, she says it's a hundred percent hand drawn the entire game. Yep. So it just yeah, it, you know it takes forever. Yeah. Oh, there's also a new character, Miss Chalice, and people say she's a little overpowered, but. You know, I love I love this game, Cuphead, but I'm so bad at these games, and this was a really challenging one, so I just didn't get very far in it. Didn't get to experience much of it. You should play my brain, Bobby. You should play the original one on easy. I think it'll be really good for your like dexterity, your like controller dexterity. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah, I know it had an easy mode. I put it. I don't know if it did originally, but I uh, there was a kid over here. He wanted to play. And I put it on easy, and he was he was playing. Yeah, okay. He was having a good time. Well, yeah. Maybe I could handle it. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, yeah. though. I I love seeing the Cuphead speed run. Um, it's been a while oh, since man. I've watched it. Maybe it's tra- cha- uh, changed a little bit, but that's a great speed run. I know we probably got summer games done quick coming up, pretty soon here. So keep an eye out for that one. Is they that- uh, they've they've already posted speed runs of the new DLC, and it's already insane. Um, I bet. Like there's a bunch of popular YouTubes that are already posting their speedruns and stuff. Like this game, and one of my favorite series is Dev Reacts to speedruns. Yeah, Those and uh, it was funny because you, what their speedrunning video, you can tell which devs actually played the games and which ones didn't, because they're like, yeah, we knew about that. Oh, we didn't know about that, and it's, it's pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, before we get too far into the show, I want to shout out some subscribers we got coming in on Twitch because we don't have we don't have Sniper to keep track of that. So Burn Division Games, thank you. King Tyron, thank you. Both coming in with the Twitch subscriptions. 19 months for Burn Division and uh, King Tyron, first time? Sweet. Thank All you, right. man. Hey, awesome. uh, Burn, we're going to take care of you. We're going to give you a plug next week, by the way. So hang in there. Uh, so Endless Dungeon, I've talked about this before, but it's, it seems to be everywhere. Um, it keeps popping up in different spots. And so I am, um, waiting, uh, you know, I'm, I, this is one of my most anticipated titles. So it's in the Endless, um, universe, which is like Endless Dungeon or Dungeon of the Endless. Um, uh, fuck, I, I think, I don't remember what the four X games are. But I think it's a French developer. They're, they're really good um, UIs, really nice. Um, what, did, what were they? What were the four X games called? Click on the Endless Universe, Bobby. It was something Universe. I mean Endless. Uh, there were a couple no of those. Endless, Endless Space. Space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, oh. Those are really nice. Uh, like, again, one of the best UIs I've, I've ever. It's just super pleasant to play that game. Um, anyway, so this is a four player co-op um roguelike uh twin stick shooter but um wow. it has a lot of uh which i mean most of those are like right down my alley it's sci-fi um and it has a bunch of uh oh my god my brain is mush guys we're gonna get through this i promise <laughs> you um anyway uh so twin stick shooters are like the most uh, simple way of of playing a game. A lot of the times, it's fucking super simple, but they have put a ton of uh, more complex uh, things on top of it, like uh, the way strategies you got to work together, a bunch of stuff like that. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking because I'm not good, but this game is gonna be good. <laughs> this game's gonna be much better than my review of it. There you go. Yeah. But uh, yeah, awesome. as soon as it pops out, like this is probably. Unless it completely gets shit on, it's going to be a day one. I love the art. Um, yeah, and like I said, twin stick, roguelike. There's not enough uh, multiplayer roguelike uh, roguelikes out there. So, yeah. yeah. Hmm. I've been waiting think, for this one. I think ever since the newest uh, Isaac DLC, the one that introduced like true co-op, yeah, it's very hard to compete against Isaac um, as far as like roguelike co-op goes. Uh, Cult of the Lamb comes out in August, on the I think on the 11th. Which is that multiplayer? Co-op. Yeah, I think it is. Uh, I don't. It doesn't sound like a game that would be multiplayer. Maybe it is because you you like, get it. like a bunch of followers and stuff. I'm pretty sure it is. Let's see. Bobby's gonna fact check you since we don't have sniper. Single this player. Is, this is this is a 
What? Thanks, Nick. I thought it was. Oh, I'm cool. over here looking at it like to get it from me and Leslie. Fuck. God damn it. <laughs> well, uh, what I read tradition. about it is that it's a cross between Binding of Isaac and uh, Stardew Valley. And then, it, it, you know, I'm all aboard for the, star, the Binding of Isaac part of that and zero part for the Stardew Valley. So I'll probably just listen to you guys talk to me, talk about this one. It seems like a Bobby yeah. game, honestly. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's going to be on not? Game Pass too, Bobby. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I think day one. Uh, I think it's day one. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, nice. so. oh the demo's out now too. Yep. It comes out in August. Yeah, August eleventh. Um, as far as what uh, I'm bringing to the table this week is a uh, neon white. So I saw this game based off like a YouTuber named Dunky. Um, we talked about it, um, and then I kind of looked into it. It's a first-person shooter reaction game slash like card game slash like aim trainer. Um, you're learning to speed run levels. Uh, while shooting things and shooting targets and uh, and enemies gives you more weapons or ammo and your your weapons are abilities so you can either shoot with your weapons or mm. you can use them as abilities so there's like a jump one a travel one. abilities yeah yeah either shoot things or use it as a travel ability yeah well one of them is also a mine so I don't it's it's kind of it's kind of weird. It, you can you can rocket jump with it. Yeah, uh, um, I rem- Bobby, do you remember there was a game that came out exactly like this, except for it, you're shooting hearts with an arrow, and it got really popular with the streamers. Is that Lovely Planet? I don't know if it was Lovely Planet, but with your hundred percent brain capacity, <laughs> you're probably right, man. I I think it might have been Lovely Planet. Let me see. I'd... Let's see. By Tiny Build Games, and this yep. is an old one. You can buy it for a dollar fifty now. This yeah. was a good game, even if it's not the one you're thinking of. It might be. So um, I don't think it is. No. But anyway, okay. either way, um, he stated that the like the game, like the actual enemies themselves, aren't hard. They're more in the sense of like they're there to train your aim and like get you where you need to be. Mm-hmm. Um, but they, they're kind of like there to mess up your speed run. And yeah, the slow game you is down. Really unique. Yeah, the game is really unique because you can replay levels with like older guns. I mean, with newer guns that you get, mm. and so like you can like s- like turn what a uh, a level that would take you like normally, I don't know, like a minute and a half. You can get it down to like thirteen seconds because you can rocket jump over a wall. But know? that's like, you know, that's like going back to an older level with your new gear and showing off, right? But which always feels good. That's great, man. I think that's a really cool concept. Uh, how much is this? Uh, I believe, uh, man, I can't remember. Twenty five bucks. Twenty five yeah, bucks. It's on sale right now for ten percent off. I know that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's twenty two. Twenty two bucks right now. Seems a little pricey, but I not to three thousand three hundred people who say it's overwhelmingly positive. Ninety eight percent, man. Yeah. Looks like, check it out. Looks like fun. Nice. You gonna pick it up? Imagine this in VR, Nick. What? You gonna pick it up? Maybe I might wait wait until maybe like goes on Game Pass or something. Yeah. All right. Last game we're going to talk about is Siege Survival Gloria Victus. This game is kind of older. Well, not really. It came out about a year ago, and somebody posted about it in Discord, and it looked really good. So it's just as the title implies, you're surviving sieges. It's a, I guess, kind of like Conan Unconquered or one of these. Um, well, it's not an RTS game. It's a strategy sim game, medieval-based, and based on the graphics. The The graphics look a little more serious. It's not cartoony or anything like that in any way. But you are uh, running this this castle and building this town and trying to survive wave after wave. And I, I don't know, something about just the look of this game looks very appealing. It reminds me of Age of Empires in a way, but it looks like it has a... Um, a uh, more of a city builder, and I think it's a roguelike element to it. What I'm getting off of this is kind of like Frostpunk um, vibes. I because, didn't play that. Because of the, I uh, neither that have I, but from what I read, um, you know, you got to make really tough decisions. Like, do we let the livestock fucking die, or do we keep the kids alive? Like, real tough decisions. Shit you would have to do in a siege. 
until you know that either you get saved by an outside force or you know you just keep going until you you can't go anymore um so yeah you're gonna be making a lot of tough decisions of, about resource management and just survival of your people it's rough but um one of the uh headlines or um blurbs i read about it is like this game tries as hard to make you feel as hopeless as being in a real siege must have been so okay. yeah dark stuff man well that doesn't sound fun haha <laughs> yeah, i mean yeah i fun and entertaining or might be two different things you know what i mean yeah yeah i don't know not a lot of people have been playing this game it's got very few reviews i mean just under a thousand and it came out about a year ago it's twenty five bucks. It's on sale for half price, so twelve fifty might be worth checking out. Yeah, twelve fifty. I think so. That's not bad. Yeah, yeah, I need a little more information on this one before I move forward. But yeah, Bobby doesn't want it if it makes him sad. Yeah, I don't like sad games, man. Yeah, I, I'm I trying to keep it light over here. Frostpunk. What's his name? Uh, Chad was like, "Why do people like sad movies? Like, why would you want to be sad?" <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Watches man. Coco walks out of the theater. Man. <laughs> All right, we, like Leslie. To this day, we've seen this movie at least thirty times. Amelia, to this day, still cries. Which one, Coco? Coco. Every yeah, time. dude. It, you know what gets me, dude? What did? What is Pixar's newest movie? We, I just watched uh, it. Encanto. No, newest. Um. Oh, Lightyear. Turning red. Lightyear. Oh, Lightyear. So there's a montage of somebody getting old. Very close to like um, the one in Up. You don't remember like mm -hmm. him and oh, so like that one got dude. I fucking I, I was very fucking close to crying during that montage. If I didn't cry, like when him and the old lady get old and then she dies, and I was like, oh jeez. And it's like two minutes, and you got me. And then uh, yeah, there's another getting old montage in uh, in Lightyear, and fucking, I was holding back tears. I might have let one go. Might have let one go. Maybe it has something to do with me getting old, but just saying. Uh, yeah. Oh, getting old montages works for, works for me if getting sad is, know, the, is the goal. You know what got me for some reason, and I, I still don't know for this, to this day, and it's video game related, is the Bastion cinematic for Overwatch. Like the character Bastion, the little <laughs> tank guy. Yeah. Oh, dude, I'm like, I don't know why I cried. <laughs> I'm trying to remember that one. Because uh, he doesn't talk. He just makes like the beep sounds like R2-D2, yes. right? So what what ends up happening is like in the story, like he, so he's a robot and he's like ordered to attack a city, but he was like injured or something. Oh, I remember and so he was like now. in stasis. Oh, right. And then the and birds, he, right? Something about birds? And, and the bird lands on him and then he's distracted. And so he dicks around with a bird for like four or five days and makes like a bird friend. And then like one day a branch snaps and because it kind of sounds like a gunshot, he goes in like full defense mode mm. and obliterates everything in the area with a minigun. Mm. And uh, the bird, like it's insinuated like the bird dies or something and you're just like, oh, <laughs> no, not the birdie. Yeah. Yeah, I do remember right. this one. Yeah, those picks or those shorts that they made for Overwatch were, were so good. The Reinhardt one was really good as well. I remember really liking that one. Of course, I, I played a lot of Reinhardt. But I, I remember the Bastion, Bastion, uh, Bastion one now as well, and that was good. They were all really well. They were like Pixar-level quality. And I'm, I'm not sure why they never made a movie. Like, they could have easily done that, but maybe it just worked better in the shorts. To, to this day, when it came to the Warhammer movie, I mean, the War, Warhammer Warcraft movie, um, I do not understand why they went live action. Like, they just could have fucking went with their current animation team and just made a super cool fucking movie and everyone would have watched it. But Dude, nope, they had to go live action. Are you, um, War, what are you talking about? Warhammer movie? No, Warcraft so, movie from 2016. Yeah, they went CGI, right? Well, no. no. There was a lot of CGI, but it was... Um, the humans the were real. Humans were live wow, action. I remember that being fucking jeez, mush brain. Yeah, I remember that one being uh, uh, totally CGI. I guess not. I mean, Sam there, there was a lot of CGI. Sam liked that one for some reason. It was uh, really popular in China, not out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Blizzard's been known for their cinematics forever, man. Mm -hmm. Speaking of Blizzard and their cinematics, I will jump right into highlights because uh, Diablo Immortal. I played that this week, and uh, I've played it on 
two systems. I played it on phone for about two hours. That was like last week. You know, I had to go. And so um, I had a good time with that. Everybody's talking about the microtransactions. I mean, they're there for sure. There's a whole store page, and you know you can pay for a bunch of stuff. But in two hours, it's not long enough to hit a paywall or anything like that. I played as the necromancer, um, you know, with his uh, skeleton rush and corpse explode and all those things that you remember about the necromancer. Um, I, I don't know how much more to say about it. I, I enjoyed my time on mobile, and that's about it. Uh, now, yesterday, I, I happened to have 30 minutes to myself. Um, John jumped on, and we we played this. Um, you have to get through the tutorial on PC before you can play together, which was probably 10 minutes. And then we were able to play with each other. So um, not a whole lot of options. It is a rough port of a mobile game onto PC. It works. There's nothing... I didn't have any hard crashes or anything like that, but you can definitely tell that it's just a phone screen stretched out, and Oof. and that's about it. Um, it does, you know, my ultra wide. I had black bars on the side, but not your typical black bars. It was this other ratio. It was, I don't know how. It was smaller. It was smaller, but you could just tell the the resolution was off. And I fucked around with the options. Whatever options I had, there wasn't a whole lot. It's in beta on PC, um, but you know once you start playing, you Diablo's been working very, very long on this like this formula: the click, click, kill, collect, kill, click, click, kill, collect, uh, kill something big, loot pinata. You know, it's addicting, and it's always been addicting. And I fell right into that. I was having a good time. Um, I. There's, I saw a headline. I didn't read the whole article, but it's like, can, we, like we have an option, but can we trust Diablo Four to the people who made Di Diablo Immortal? And it's like, um, but yeah, we don't have a choice. And obviously, we're probably going to play Diablo Four. But I think what they're saying is like, is it going to be inundated with uh, loot, loot boxes, or uh, sorry, um, pay to win stuff? And microtransaction. My, well, I'd be surprised microtransaction. because they they had the market in Diablo 3 on release, and they eventually got rid of it because it was ruining the game, so they made this huge... Of course, those were different people back then. Blizzard has changed quite a bit since, yeah. since that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, even though there's been backlash on this, and, you know, um, I, I was listening to a podcast. I started listening to the ACG guy. You know, he's the one who's like, buy now, buy later, wait, or buy now, wait, oh, yeah. or, yeah. I, I love his content, man. I love his single, his videos. I started listening to his podcast. I didn't enjoy it quite as much. I don't want to poop on it. But, uh, yeah, the guy knows a ton about gaming and stuff. So I started listening to them. And uh, they were saying that, yeah, these guys, you know, they meet with these guys and they, they've they met these guys. These are hyperly intelligent people. They're like fucking CEOs of major corporations. They know that we don't like it. But it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, they're making a shit ton of money. There's a ton of money. There's a ton of people out there that dump ten thousand dollars in a game, and if you how many how many sixty dollar titles do you have to sell to make that ten thousand of profit of something you it doesn't cost very much to make, you know what I mean? Uh, all the hats or whatever it is. So yeah, uh, I don't I don't know if we're gonna keep going in this. Um, this the way things are with the microtransactions. I don't know if Diablo Four is gonna have it, but you know, I feel like um, stop spending ten thousand so we get better games, jerks. <laughs> but uh, I enjoyed it for what it to was. For all the whales out there, yeah, for all the whales out there, I, I did enjoy. Uh, I enjoyed what I played. Yeah, nice. Mm -hmm. All right, um, I'm gonna talk about a TV show that I watched this week. So somebody recommended this to me. Um, an old friend of mine just texted me out of the blue and said, hey, have you been watching the show Players? <laughs> yeah. And I was like, no. Like, first of all, that's a weird name. Just, it's called Players. I guess. Ray, Ray came over. He's like, this is my dream show. Dude, 11 teams, 11 it is dreams. 
I've got to figure out how to pause this audio here. <laughs> Hold on. Paramount Plus, shut up. Okay. So, play. So, I looked it up, and it just came out recently. They're doing this thing where they drop a couple episodes up front, and then they release one every week. It's going to be right. like a 10-part series. So, it's a mockumentary yeah. about a competitive esports team called Fugitive that plays League of Legends. And, you know, a lot of... It, it's about like their team getting along and trying to win worlds and all, all that. And, and it was made by the guys who did American Vandal. And if you remember that, that was a Netflix oh, yeah. show years ago about like who drew the, the penis <laughs> on something yeah. like on a, a wall. And it was like these high school students who were making a documentary about it for their film club. And it was so funny, man. It was so clever and so smart. And they did a second season. And it was, it was funny as well. It was great, but it was kind of like, how long can you keep doing that? And then they canceled they canceled American Vandal, but it was so great because it makes fun of all those documentaries that my girlfriend w- watches that I can't stand. The ones that are like the true crime yeah, ones, right, right. and they do it so well. So when I saw that, I was like, okay, I'll check it out. It's esports, and it's um, and it's by um, the guys from American Vandal. I'll check it out. And this real quick, Bobby, like yeah. on the American Vandal, Vandal, it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's a mockumentary. You're totally like laughing every few seconds because they're they're really pouring it on you. Mm-hmm. But then you're you are like, oh, but then who did draw yeah. the dick? No, you get drawn in. Yeah, that you is, get drawn in. That is exactly <laughs> what happened with this show. I was walking in and expecting something very broad where they exaggerate stuff and they make the same tired jokes about gaming. And no, they don't really do that. Like they 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 make jokes and stuff, but they play it pretty pretty straight. And like they they know their stuff. They've either are very familiar with esports and League of Legends or they've done their research because everything is very accurate. You know, they have like an episode about like streaming versus competitive gaming or, you know, and every time they, they even have streamers from League of Legends, uh, Skara and Voiboy. And I know them because oh, they man, did that. Oh man, those are some old, old fucking streamers. Yeah, yeah. They did like some crossover thing with Heroes of the Storm once. So that's why I know them. But I'm watching this show and I'm just like, yeah, it's kind of funny, but like, honestly, I'm more invested. Like, I want to see what happens wow. next. And I'm totally wow. hooked on this show. Show, and I'm so mad that they didn't just release it all at once so I can binge it and I got to wait week after week and download it every yeah. week and just like and <laughs> see what happens next but it's it's so good man I, I can not help but recommend it and here's the crazy thing dude after watching this and it just like seeing like the esports Leak. and everything it just it it triggered something in me again and I was just like I really want to play a competitive game again so here's the bombshell dude whoa I went back and I played Heroes of the Storm oh no no we're gonna what? lose him we're gonna lose him he's off the wagon I'm off he's the off the wagon, wagon guys the I'm meds. off the Get wagon the dude I had the time of my life playing <laughs> Heroes it was oh, so good no. dude it was so good Oh my god! <laughs> I, like I played, like I was just playing some ARAM. First of all, it, the game's great now that Blizzard left it alone. Like mm. you know, they the reason I stopped playing back in 2018, they they canceled the competitive scene. A bunch of people left, and I was like, you know, I got to quit this game anyway. Um, and then yeah, I didn't play for four years, and they've kind of like they've kept it on life support uh, since I've been gone. They've released five new heroes in you know four years, which is not a lot for a MOBA. Um, but they made you know quality of life changes and all that. But now that like they haven't been messing with it so much, the game's actually in a great spot. But yeah, I reconnected with some old friends, been playing a bunch of ARAM and just having a ball playing that game. But it's gonna stay in that spot. It's not gonna move. There's nothing moving that ball, right? Which is not bad, but I'm just saying. I mean, they'll probably continue to come out with like new characters and stuff, but they aren't like creating a lot of new content. Like they would, they do these like new events. Now they're just cycling through all the all the same events they used to do. You know, they got their summer one, the holiday one, all that. And it, it's okay, man. You know, like, I, I'm alone on this, but my opinion on MOBAs was, like, you got to just, like, let the game breathe a while because you keep adding new characters and changing the meta and, like, things just get, uh, you know, they get too crazy. You got to, like, relearn everything every three weeks. In Heroes, they would come out with a hero every three to four weeks. It mm-hmm. was just crazy. But, yeah, man. I mean, part of me wishes that back in the day I would have just gotten hooked on League of Legends and invested more in that because that obviously it's I I think it's stupid to argue what's the better MOBA I still prefer Heroes because it's quicker and it's more team based and all that stuff I mean team based that could be argued how do you know what what horse to hit your wagon to you don't know yeah yeah you don't it's really just whichever one you end up spending more time with you tend to just prefer that one so had I 
had I gotten into League, then you know that would have been my game. Dota, I think it's great that they give you all the characters up front for free. I always thought it was stupid and manipulative that all these other MOBAs, they, they nickel and dime you. I mean, Smite was okay because they said 30 bucks, you get all the gods forever. A new right. one comes out, you get it. Like, that's fair. They shot themselves in the foot on that one, I feel like. Yeah, maybe yeah. they, they, maybe they did. Do they not do that anymore? Um, for Smite? I'm not sure. I don't sure. know. Maybe. God, we should all go back and play some Smite when they get Zaya and, and Albert together. Get the old crew. Here's the thing, though, dude. Like, if you do go back, ARAM is the perfect thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because, uh, I mean, game. yeah. It's because, like, you 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 lose, you're like, oh, it was the RNG. And then you win, and you're like, yeah, I'm clearly better. I'm like, clearly the best. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, it covers both bases. Uh, I, started, I stopped playing Conquest because losses felt so so much worse than a win felt like a win. No, you like, spend 45 minutes and to lose is just yeah. devastating. Like yeah. uh, in a win, you're like you're like that's what should happen. You're like I've been practicing, mm-hmm. I've been I've been reading all the fucking forums. This that's what should happen. When you lose, you're like how did that possibly happen, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, um mobiles are are tough games, man. They just I I kind of feel like they bring out the worst in people, but I don't know. Um, you know, you know what's crazy is that so League has ARAM as well. Is that people legit have just ARAM accounts, and it's like sad. Why like they've had to change the rules of ARAM because of it. So like, obviously, when you, you play ARAM, you want characters that have like AOEs and like AOE stun abilities and stuff like that, right? And so because oh, I see what you're saying. And so yeah, like people used to. I think they if you have a new do. account, you can kind of slender your your well, random. Can't but you? In, if you play ARAM, at least in Heroes of the Storm, you can get characters you don't own. Yeah, exactly. With um, no, same thing not, with in League, you, it, that's not how it is. It's only the characters that you own. You have to think. I you th- I think you have to own at least twenty three. That's an easy fix, man. You just fucking yeah. you open them up all um, in Smite. Yeah, you can. Hundred percent get uh, characters you uh, don't have. Leak had a lot of uh, stuff I didn't like. I I don't know what it's like right now, but I remember they had something where you could buff your character and it would like apply to any character that you played. It was uh, what was it called? Like scrolls runes. or something? <laughs> runes? Maybe runes. it was runes. Yeah, yeah. But so, you really had to like build. You had to play for a long time to get those built up. They really yeah, muscled so, you into spending money in that game. It was unfortunate. Yeah, they got rid of those completely, and so like all that stuff is now built in like you it's all free um like the the bus and everything oh that's good it's so that you can <laughs> it's so that you can um play characters in different ways like maybe you want to play a character that's traditionally magic damage you can play it like uh like physical damage um what's really cool is that there's like an add-on that you can download which works for like a bunch of other games and the add-on will suggest those rune pages for you and you're like this this one has a eighty percent win rate, and uh, you know you just click it, and then it automatically applies those runes for you, and you don't have to worry about changing okay. that stuff before the game and stuff. Hmm. And yeah. like it's, I think it's like it, it's like it's stuff that you could learn. Isn't that stuff that you could just look up on the internet if you did your research anyway? Yeah, well, it saves you. It, it saves time. you some clicks and some time. Yeah, yeah, it just saves you some time because like when you're doing draft pick and you're an idiot or like you get like a like a switch pick where someone picks your champion and like you're the last one to pick and you only have like 30 seconds to set your runes like you, you want something like that to, to to help you out yeah so a little bit from the chat here uh billy bob joe hoba uh coming in for four months he says thanks for the podcast every week you are welcome thank you for the money every week month thank you for the support man <laughs> uh Warconia says acg podcast is pretty good i like how he includes people from europe global Gave me perspective. I thought it was good, dude. Honestly, I'll tell you what it was. Uh, the dude himself, the guy who makes the videos, the ACG guy, just seemed like a little bit of a bully on the mic. He was always talking over people and and like um, cutting people off and stuff. Maybe I'm that guy on this podcast and I just don't know it. Uh, but yeah, I was like, oh, this this guy, you know, great uh, great on his single videos, uh, but a uh, little bit of bully on the mic. Um, Oh, what the fuck is happening? This is a DLG bombshell. <laughs> well, for new listeners, they probably don't understand. I'm going to explain I, it right after this. Yeah. He says, for the love of God, we are taking we are talking about HOTS again. <laughs> so if you guys don't know, uh, Bobby did this uh, thing of like, what was that key word that came up more than anything? It was HOTS, right? 
Yeah, Heroes of the Storm. Heroes of because the Storm. Because I played that game like nonstop for four years, I yeah. think. Like just a ton of that. So yeah, it came up a lot on the podcast. Let's go with Double Bombshell, Bobby. How much money did you spend on Hots? Oh, God, thousands of dollars. Yeah. Yeah, about. Uh, pr- probably a couple thousand. Probably around three. About 3,000. Three yeah. Three yeah. Yeah. But I mean, compared three. to what Cosmetics, people spent on, on League, like that's not... I don't know. People spend a lot on their league accounts too. So no, for, uh, and then if you were to trickle those three thousand dollars down into hours, it's still probably a pretty good deal. Yeah, considering all the hours I spent. Yeah, exactly. But I, I'll tell you what, man. Like I'm not going to be talking about hots every week, even, even if I continue to play it, because there's... I could totally control it, guys. <laughs> I could quit whatever I want. Next no, I mean, week, dude, I try this champion out. It's one of the new ones. You know, one of the five. No, that no. I well, play. see, that's the thing, man. There's no new. There's no new heroes. They're called heroes and heroes of the storm, not champions. But uh, there's no new heroes. There's no new content. There's there's nothing to talk about. You know, like yeah. even if I were to continue playing it, I I can't really bring that to the podcast, dude. You're gonna. Even fucking... If I didn't want to be addicted to it, I could, I couldn't even be addicted to it watch guys <laughs> no i'm not saying i'm not going to be addicted to it i'm just saying i'm not going to talk about it on the podcast two different things i've always said it's fine to fucking have your addictions like i told people i'm going to talk about final fantasy 7 for the next fucking four weeks at least and i am Better. going to like i'm going to keep going as long as you bring new things to the table yeah. uh but yeah right now i feel like you just did a line of right heart and then next, <laughs> next week you're going to be injecting fucking some other character i can't think of one yeah. Okay. Well, this let me try I... really hard. Reinhardt is one for sure, right? No, Reinhardt's not in That's, an, over, the that's an Overwatch, what? buddy. You failed. Yeah, he's not in you there. You failed yet. turn one, buddy. Oh, well, shit. No, no. I was thinking Rainer. Rainer. Okay, Rainer. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, you know how Heroes of the Storm works, Nick. Like, they, they take characters from all the Blizzard games and put them yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Okay. So, like, like, Reinhardt Chogol, could be a two character. Players can play Chogol. Yeah. But Reinhardt is not in there yet. Well, if they ever do. Are any Overwatch? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah there's the, a ton of Overwatch ones. The speed, the. Yeah, there's Lucio, Tracer, May. May's a new one. Um, but this is what I want to do, man. Like maybe, maybe after July, because July is going to be a crazy month for us, but I, I want a reunion between you, me, Zaya and Albert. I think play, we get play it. They still Smite. play. Well, last time I talked to them, they still play. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And pe- people on the show probably don't know who those people are, but this was like the OG crew from like 10 years ago when we were all hooked on Smite. Albert like, was our first sniper. Yeah, he would uh, he would help us out on the show, like looking things up. Yeah, in the in the early days. Yeah. Yep, and then uh, yeah. Zayev makes video games now, or at least he was. I'm not sure what he's doing at the yeah. moment. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I had this harebrained idea. I wanted to get our podcast on Steam, so I said if we de- gamified the start button enough, and just get it on there. This is back when like there was a bunch of like um, what do you call it? acid flips, Bobby. Where oh, people yeah. were just making shit games just so yeah. people could buy You could get cards. anything on Steam. Yeah. yeah. So at that point, I was like, oh, if we make a game and all you do is like, you know, jump over a few things and then you push a start button and podcast plays. Yeah. And we up, we do a patch every day and put it on there. Like, and it's free, obviously. Like, we could hack. That's, a, that's our way of hacking Steam into fucking, uh, oh, hacking yeah. our podcast into Steam. And then literally 30 minutes, he made a little, like, a little world where you go in and you fucking click a button and play the podcast. I was like, "What are you? Are you a wizard, dude? Like, what the fuck happened?" <laughs> well, he's got a he's got a game like a real game on. Steam. Oh yeah, he's got a couple. He's got mm-hmm. a, a Pokemon clone, mm-hmm. I believe, and um, he he l- kind of left that alone to start working on a second one. That was a while. We should yeah, we, we got to reconnect with those guys. Let's just interview. Him. Yeah, and I've got a screenshot that I took back in the day. I'll post it in Discord whenever uh, when I get home. But I got a screenshot of all of us in Smite playing our typical characters. You know, I'm playing. I, I'm Ymir. You're you're playing um, Hebo, yeah. and uh, Albert Hebo. is on uh, <laughs> Arachne, and I can't remember what Zay is on. But we're all posing for a shot, and we took this screenshot. I think it was on our like original DL Gaming web page. And we're all doing like our taunt moves and stuff. Yeah, it's uh, got the memories, folks. We've been doing this a while. Yeah, we've been at this for a minute, dude. I remember I played, uh, I played against the fucking one of either at the time number one or number two in Smite. I just happened to solo against him, and I won one interaction against him. You could not shut me up about it. I was fucking talking it. He jumped over, and I fucking knew it was coming because I seen his videos. God damn, that was so exciting. Because Smite was like, it was big, but it was also like, at that level, it was also small at the higher levels. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And we didn't really have perspective back then. Like, we couldn't really, I don't know. It seemed huge to us. You know, it seemed like a world to us. Right. uh, I don't know. 
That's the only thing we've ever been. Is it the only one we've ever been like both addicted to? It ever? Maybe there might there might have been. I don't think I've ever been addicted to TF2. I be, yeah, I was definitely addicted to TF2. Uh, I don't know if we played that much. Anyway, I think you were. we're going down nostalgia lake. I was like, Bobby, this is going to be a super short episode. We're missing people. We don't have anything. And then no, we I, had a, I had a bombshell. I, yeah. I didn't even put it in the show notes. I wanted to be a, be a surprise. Pretty good, man. That secret, huh? Yeah. All right. All right. But Final Fantasy, the remake. So we've got a, we've got a listener question about this, basically asking if it's really as good as, as everyone says it is. Yeah, so um, I do you want to read that and then maybe... yeah, let's let's read this because I think it'll kind of tee up you you talking about it. So white but still hip says Amelia, we both love the original Final Fantasy VII and we both generally dislike Japanese games. What percentage of your enjoyment of the Final Fantasy VII remake would you attribute to nos- nostalgia or love of the original? I'm considering buying uh, I'm considering buying it, but some part of me is convinced I'll play it for two hours. Be like, yep, this is why I hate JRPGs and never pick it up again. Yeah, man. Like, we are simpatico. We're, we're right there. We're exactly in the same boat. And I do think that this game stands on its own laurels. Um, uh, I, I'm actually going to go into more things that I like this week. Um, so the first major boss uh, has an entire level kind of dedicated to him. So as you're playing and working up towards this boss you are going through the factory that made him. So as you're doing that, you're hacking these computers and it's being built as you're projecting, pro- projecting towards, uh, sorry, progressing towards through the level. Uh, they're making, they're rush building it because they're like, they're here, fucking build the shit. And then the, the <laughs> soldiers, the soldiers are like, it's not ready, sir. And they're, they're, he's like, doesn't matter. They're here. Fucking do it anyway. And so it's being built as you're progressing through the level, but you're also hacking into it and taking parts away from it. But you have some agency in it. So it, like you're taking away its like whatever speed module. And so you, that'll slow it down a little bit. But you have choices between that and like um, some bombs that it has or some other thing that it has. There's uh, four choices. And you get to choose this over and over and over. And you can keep making the same choice and take away its speed way, way down. Or you can like take away all its bombs and it won't have any bombs. And then, uh, funny enough, what you're doing when you hack these computers is you're telling them, you're telling the computer that these components are bad for it. And so it's throwing them in the junk pile. And if you play... Uh, yeah, if you play your cards right, uh, I ha- hack this other uh, computer and this other room. You get into the junk room and you pick that stuff up and add it to your your own inventory. I just thought it was so fucking inventive. Even if it it sounds more grandiose than it is, uh, how much it plays out. Like you get these fucking grenades basically, and you get this like speed potion. It's not like all that, but it sounds cool. And ends up, play, who knows how much I actually affected the boss at the end. But I felt like it was. And uh, it was fucking really cool. And then, um, so I thought I understood the combat. The com- I, I, I went on and on about it last week, about how interesting it is. And it is fucking interesting. I've never played anything like this. I've been playing games for fucking 30 years. I've never played a fucking game like this. Um, where the combat was... Uh, real time and also turn based, um, and it sounds weird and it was weird, but you know once you got a handle, I was like, okay, I think I get it. And then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna watch some videos just in case I don't have the entire grasp that I think I do. But let's check it out. So I started watching videos, and yeah, it's deeper than I thought. So um, you have. Well, it's kind of like, you know, I've been watching UFC for fucking 30 years now, too, 25 years. And um, it's kind of like a real fight, even though you're playing these fantasy characters against these fucking robots or whatever the fuck. It's like a real fight. You kind of like, um, you're trying to get the guy, the other person on the ropes or backing up on the back foot. And that'll be called, that'll be called uh, pressured. And it'll say right above his head, pressured. And then at that point, you can use your focus attacks. 
every character has a focus attack. That is an attack that raises the pressure bar super fast. And then, uh, that's when you can get their staggered bar. Uh, there's multiplier on their staggered bar. That's where you really want them. Staggered is basically stunned. So as you can imagine, stunning a boss is great, even if it is for two or three seconds. So um, yeah, you you want to lay it on them, but then just like in the UFC, like you get a guy staggered, you go all in, and then you 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 drain your gas tank, and you got nothing left for when they come back at you. And so um, you can't. You need to know when to pour on the resources. You need to know. There's a whole there's a whole resource management going on, and this is all going on in real time. Uh, well, it slows down when you do your uh, strategy stuff. Uh, it doesn't stop completely, but it slows down to a significant amount. So you can really think about what you're doing, but you can't think too long because you'll start eating bullets. And so, yeah, one of the most interesting and uh, fun combat systems I've ever played. Uh, uh, Nick, did you play Final Fantasy 15? Because that's I when played, they that's when they introduced this. I didn't play fifteen, but I did play seven, and so I got a taste of it. I put three hours into it. Mm-hmm. Man, I love the combat system, I really do. But my issue with this game is that it's got too many goddamn anime sounds in it. <laughs> I thought it was light on the anime. That it's there for sure, but it's pretty it's, light. It's definitely there, but like, like it's like ooh, camera angle change, uh, camera angle change. Uh. And like it's like uh, in the it, it like it's it's I don't know I think I may be just at like where it's nothing but storytelling and just people in a bar just like flirting with each other and just a bunch of noises. I get it. But I don't know. Um, I still haven't installed on my PS5, so I might finish it one day. Yeah, man, I re- I really enjoy this game, and like I know, but like the dogs will start coming in. Uh, <laughs> Sam. Sam uh, just brought me a drink. I think it's because it's my birthday. Has she ever done this ever, Bobby? No. Nah. This should be a goddamn ritual. <laughs> yeah. It must be a special occasion. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I do honestly believe that it stands on its own laurels. Because you know what, dude? What percentage of people playing this are players of the original? I would say less than... It wouldn't be the majority. I don't think. No, I, w- I would say there's more people that played this than, than the original. Mm-hmm. Well, it is on sale now. You can get it for fifty bucks instead of seventy. This game was seventy bucks. No, I paid. Yeah, I paid forty, dude. Really? Yeah, it was on sale. Um, that's why I picked it up the day it, when it Did came. You pre-purchase? How'd you get it so cheap? No, it was forty bucks. Uh, forty bucks? Pretty sure it was forty bucks when it came out. Uh, the day, the the week that it came out. Huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, crazy. And I couldn't. I can't believe. And you know what? This has inspired me to play more long, long form games. Again, oh, the, really? the pickup drop off game, uh, the ability. I'm in in fucking thirty seconds, and I'm out whenever I want. You can just f- save, and you're out. I'm actually um, about to steal your idea. I mean, steal your concept right there, like of of pick up and put down. Um, I was telling Leslie this. I was like, dude, I was thinking about making like a YouTube series where I review games based on how friendly they are to like dads. Yeah, for sure. Or like parents. It's like, yeah, you know, this game like auto saves every fucking 10 seconds and like you can just hop in and out. Like it only takes like 10 seconds to boot, like just stuff like that. Hmm. But because there's a there's a YouTube channel we watch called Girlfriend Reviews and she reviews what it's like to watch somebody play a game. Mm. Um, and so it's a uh, it's pretty interesting. So I, I, I'm, I'm thinking, hey, probably I can do it with, you know, being a dad. Yeah, yeah, there's a market for that. Yeah, for sure. Um, what else we got? Um, Escape from Tarkov. Yeah, this is so not this is not a slight on Escape or you, Nick. I just <laughs> I got a pee so bad, but You're please fine. go on. Go ahead. Uh, so Escape from Tarkov uh, does its probably every five months, every four months thing where it completely wipes, and so everybody gets reset to square one you know you start off with the starting equipment you start off with um the starting money uh the reason why it does this is so that the game doesn't get stale people don't stay overpowered and things like that and it just happened two days ago or i should say last friday um i would say right now is probably the best time to pick up the game because 
you are on an even playing field. And if you're new, there's plenty of people teaching people how to play right now. Um, so yeah, go ahead and play it. Uh, I mean, go ahead and pick it up if you can. Um, I would even probably just pick up the normal version of the game because there's three versions of the game. And if you like it, just upgrade to the premium version. Um, cause there's so many people that are still on like the, the, the cusp of buying the game or not, but I, 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 I love it. It's, it's one of my favorite games of all time. Yeah. Maybe one of these days I'll give it a shot again, but I, I did not care for this game when I first started playing it. Uh, it's under, it's understandable. It's one of like the, it's one of like the steepest learning curves for games of all time. Like, I remember when I first, first played it, dude, I didn't know how to fucking reload a shotgun. Like, I, I I got a shotgun, and I was, like, I was trying to put bullets in it while it was in my inventory, while I was, like, waiting for the games, like, in between games. And I just couldn't figure it out. I had to fucking YouTube it how to do it. And I played, I've been playing this game for a long-ass time. Damn. So, it's pretty interesting. Cool. Bobby, any interest in playing this? Like I always, not really. Again, I had I really did not like this well, game. It's not the same played. game. I know right? it's so different. Maybe I'll I'll check it out. But I just in general don't like these types of games either. So it's kind of a hard sell for me. It's too hard. Yeah, these guys fucking know what they're doing, except for Nick, who doesn't know how to load a shotgun. <laughs> yeah, no, I was straight poo poo caca brains when <laughs> that should have happened. Well, like it was bad. All right. Well, everything's better now. Before we get into listener questions, I um, just want to talk about something. So every now and then we've got a uh, listener that uh, asks us for something, you know, a member of our community that asks a favor. How us. dare they? <laughs> and we are always happy to help out because our community does so much for us. We, we're always willing to return the favor. Um, so Shadow on our Discord, he is uh, conducting a research study uh, for college and he needs people to be a part of this. I thought it was sourdough X. I thought it's shadow, but dough is spelt like dough. Like, like Oh. Like dough. Yeah. Oh, shadow. Oh, shadow. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you know how you auto read stuff? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You just kind of, yeah. yeah, you don't read every letter. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so he's doing a research study. It's on sexual harassment of female gamers, and it's specifically from the male perspective. So he's looking for males above the age of 18 that live in the United States. Very specific here. Um, and I know we've got a lot of listeners that meet that criteria. So if you are interested in being a part of this, we're going to be posting about it in our Discord and on social media as well. So keep an eye out for that. Um, it's a it's a survey. It's just a survey. So you can take that. That'll help them out a lot. And if you want to help them out even more, then you can, at the end of the survey, uh, sign up for an interview. And he'll interview about your experiences and opinions regarding the matter. So How long did it take, Bobby, the, the survey? Um, the survey, uh, it... it Depends because there's some written portions. Oh, okay. So depending on how much you write, could take uh, longer or shorter. But you know, for me, it took like I don't know, fifteen minutes or something. Yeah, um, it's not too long, and we can also participate in that. The casters, you know, the mods. I mean, this is not just for our community. So. Yeah, I'm totally gonna do yeah, it. I, I definitely will. Be. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that would that would help him out a lot, and uh, that would be great. It's always great for us to give back to our community. And spoilers: the result that he's gonna come up with after this is all done is men are pigs. <laughs> and it's yeah, it's yeah. probably amplified once you take away uh, anonymity or add anonymity. Yeah. I, I feel like things are getting better, and especially in regards, because the survey has to do with a lot of um, yeah, platforms Yeah, because all the girls well. left, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so the girls, we scared them all away. <laughs> oh, God. No, but I feel like uh, platforms like YouTube, Twitch, like they're, it's not perfect, right? But I feel like they are taking the steps to try to reduce this type of stuff and also make a better environment that doesn't tolerate that behavior. I, I don't know. It's a lot better. I mean, shit, dude. We've yeah. been gaming since the 90s. It's gotten a lot better, right? Like, there's been oh, yeah. progress. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, I, you know, when, when fucking companies make you behave as opposed to people governing themselves, you know what I mean? Yeah. I want to... <clears throat> I don't know if it would work, but I think taking anonymity out of the internet would help tons. No, I agree. Yeah, yeah. it. Uh, I think in I think in China they do that, but even then they still figure out a way how to maintain anonymity. But I feel like that that's not Big Brother stuff, right? Like if you just are your name online, 
uh, I don't think that's like, mm-hmm. you and know. I, that's how older people do do it as well. Yeah. Like my parents, like they have yeah, no, there is no hiding. In yeah. <laughs> they, they have no screen name. That's a very gamer thing. And this came up while I was watching, um, players, uh, what I was talking about earlier, the, uh, mockumentary about competitive esports. Um, you know, they make a lot of I don't jokes. I what like, you're talking about. What are you talking about, man? Players, the team. Yeah, I'm kidding. I'm okay. kidding. I, I was Just what, talking about it. Yeah. Wow. I wonder why you go uh, over it again. But, you know, they, they, they all have their screen names, right? And they'll yeah. have these, like, incredibly serious conversations or heated discussions, and they're calling each other, like, Spaghetti and Frugger <laughs> right. and, like, all these ridiculous <laughs> names, you know? And it just kind of undercuts the whole seriousness of it, which is hilarious and how things actually are. <laughs> but as I'm watching this, my, my girlfriend asks, like, do, you, do gamers actually call themselves th- by, their gaming, by their screen names in real life? And I'm like, yeah, actually, it does happen a lot. It Especially because a lot of like times... days. You, I call days yeah. more than I call... Well, you meet, you meet those people and you call them that right. at first. And then you get to know the person behind the screen name. But, right. you know, you still refer to them by the name you've first used. So, yeah, it ends up happening quite a bit. But it is kind of Which, ridiculous. Let's be honest. It's usually a cooler name that they're dug. Yeah, yeah, but honestly, I I think name. with esports we got to get rid of the screen names, and I'm probably alone on this, and that's okay. But I yeah. just think it's so dumb, man. I think it's it's silly. It might like casting would become a it'd be like real sports, you know. Mm-hmm. Here comes Marquez coming up. The yeah. blah, blah. I, I feel like it would do a lot more for the credibility of esports yeah. because it's just so dumb when it's just like people have these ridiculous screen names and um, like casters are using them. Or Let like me they drop with the cut. <laughs> Pent to kill, <laughs> and they they do the like interviews, that. and it's just like I, I don't know, man. Like maybe I'm just too old, and like I think that's ridiculous. But you ever get a penta, Bobby? It's my no, no, I never played ADC. Yeah, I you're never, always yeah. the support. Yeah, you're not gonna get a penta on your mirror. Well, mid, <laughs> mid, mid can also. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I'm solo mid. God before, damn! But. Literally, I got a, an actual erection when when anytime <laughs> I got a penta kill. Penta kill. Oh god. And, All right. uh, they made the pentakill noise in League of Legends. Like before, it was just like pentakill. Like it was loud. Now it's like seductive. It's like pentakill. Ooh, it's really it's that sounded really, great. Uh, that was the best I've ever heard you, man. Yeah, it was pretty. It's pretty, pretty sexy. All right, time for some more listener questions. Here we got one from Warconius. Did you ever buy games from Radio Shack? That might be a Canada thing. I don't think Radio Shack ever sold yeah. games. I didn't know they no, did. They did. Yeah, yeah, dude. No, it, that, it, it would be like six or seven games. It'd pretty much be like the selection from like a Costco, essentially. I never really bought anything from Radio Shack. I don't know. I, I remember going there a few times, but there, first of all, there are no more Radio Shacks out yeah. here. So. Well, I'm older than you, Bobby. So, like, it was more of a thing back then. There in the was day. no Best Buy. There was no Target, yeah. didn't have, there was no Target. We had like, there's other things, but, um, Circuit yeah, City? certain things, Circuit City, yeah. There wouldn't be many, like, Electronics departments were limited, pretty much. So if you had to get anything that like amplified or uh, replacement cord or anything like that, obviously there's no Amazon. It was Radio Shack, a good place for like bits and parts. Yeah, for things. No, I do remember going to Radio Shack like way back in the day for a few things. But yeah, until Fries came out and just shat all yeah. over. Fries. Uh, now, now Fries is gone. Yeah. But, yeah, God, right. dude, I, I used to love those Circuit City commercials. They would always end with the plug, like, coming down and being, like, the entrance mm. of the store. I just, I don't know. I was always mesmerized by that as yeah. a kid. Yeah, let's see. Circuit it's pretty City good, Bobby. Lit. I just remember everything being gray and red. I was, uh, the there price. it is. There you it see is. see that, Nick? Here it comes. Hold on. Full screen. I, <laughs> I was yeah. just like, that's so fucking cool when I was a kid. Yeah. I don't know why. I uh, worked for Circuit City. Uh, two stories about Circuit City. Um, one, don't let the new guy on the forklift. <laughs> That's all I got to say, man. Uh, I hit one of the corners and an entire shelf. When I say shelf, it's not like a shelf they have here in your house, guys. Three stories of speakers, both speakers, fell and crumbled down. And um, I was like, well, I'm clearly fired. <laughs> and I went and talked to my manager, and he was like, yeah, okay, cool, whatever. Uh, yeah, insurance, I guess. And then the other thing was we had a guy who, uh, you know, we, I was, a I was in the back. I was a warehouse guy and it was like, you know, bigger guys that could pick stuff up. And, uh, the, our leader, the, the, 
the guy's been around the longest. He was surly, really, really surly, and uh, just kind of a prick. And so, uh, at the time, we called, I don't, I don't know whose idea it was, but we called this guy, we called the radio station, and they did, you know, prank calls. And we had them pretend that they w- it was like a CEO or something, like some higher up VP from Circuit City, and that they they had heard good things about him and they wanted to talk to him. But then this guy, the the radio guy, was just really good at the, just like flipping, sl- surly, uh, slowly going from something positive to something negative. So he called them up and he's like, "Yeah, we're just you know." We had heard really good things, and the guy's like, "Yeah, you know, I yeah, I try really hard, sir." And blah blah blah. Told hook, line, and sinker, dude. You listen to those things, and you're like, "Oh, this is completely made up." Sometimes they're not, man. Like I knew the guy; that was exactly how it was. And then I, uh, eventually he goes, "Well, you know, you're just a warehouse rat, right? You're just a warehouse rat." And he goes, uh, "I don't know if that's appropriate, sir." <laughs> and then he just starts really leaning into him. God damn, dude. When it's somebody you know, those things are 10 times better. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Circuit City. Yeah, you don't see those anymore. Mm. Our comp One USA's. more story. Sorry. Okay. Manager had a three wheeled European car. Uh, we were big, burly dudes. So we what? would just. We would just pick that thing up and hide it all over different places, dude. We would saran wrap it. We would fucking put cardboard boxes all around it. That point, she came in crying. She's like, "Where's my fucking car? I fucking yeah, it was fucked up, man." We would put it at other parking lots. It was just easy to pick up. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Next question from Zap. Best games or genres to play when you're sick or have no energy? Ooh. The long oh, ones, man. Um. I, I'm not going to go with the game here. I'm going to go with uh, Lord of the Rings. I always sit down. Uh, it's been a while since I've like, been out for that long. But if I was, you know, I'd watch Lord of the Rings. That's always a good one to do, back to back. Especially the extended editions now. So like 4, 8, 12, almost 13 hours of content. Okay. I always thought it was weird with the extended editions with uh, the Mouth of Sauron. It, I I found out his mouth is supposed to be fucking vertical, and when I heard that, I was like, ugh. <laughs> it was just like just and like I seeing the original art for it, I just thought it was so fucking gross. Well, I guess the eye is also vertical, right? No, they're hidden behind like a shaw kind of thing that like hides his eyes. But yeah, like the mouth of Sauron is like a really gross fucking. I gotta thing. watch those movies again. I don't remember anything about Lord of the Rings. Well, the oh, um, the show's coming out. Yeah, the show's coming out, and the high def remake, yeah, uh, all came out. But here's the thing, dude. I maybe you can find it for me, Bobby. Uh, I want to. Sh- I want to watch it with the family. I want to watch the high def remakes with the family, but not the extended editions. And it is so hard to find. I can't find it. Uh, if you go to uh, HBO Max, they have they have them, but it's only the extended editions. It's almost like nobody wants to watch the theatrical re- releases anymore. Well, the original releases were pretty damn long to begin with. Yeah, they're like three and a half, and then the extended are four and a half. I can't get a kid to sit down yeah, for four and a half hours. That's a uh, that's a bit much. Yeah, you're watching that in chunks like a TV show. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, um, you know what I would recommend when you're sick or have no energy is card battler games. I. I Played a good amount of Monster Train this week. I've been working my way up uh, that game. I'm uh, I, I'm on the same level or right behind JP Diddy. It shows you like where you're at with other people. Oh yeah, and uh, is there? Yeah, there's a pseudo co-op, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It shows you when you pass them up. Yeah, it's not a co-op. Not but, co-op. But yeah, it's like, like a leaderboard yeah, kind right. of. Um, yeah, and then Jiffy. I don't know if you remember him, yeah. one of our uh, listeners. He's level sixteen. I you know I'm like seven or eight, but I don't know how he got. He'd probably put a lot of time into that, but I I don't know those games that that type of game you can take at your own pace and it's not it, it doesn't require like a hundred percent brain power or focus either it's just and it's it's relaxing a you have to think yeah you do I mean there's some puzzle solving but it's not just like uh, it's it's there's not an intensity to it you know it's so hot in here dude every t- time I put on my glasses they fog up. <laughs> I'm just sweating balls over here. I was that was me last week. I'm okay right now. Damn. Wow. For me, it's a uh, Animal Crossing. I actually got sick during like when everything got locked down, and it was like a stomach sickness, and I was just pretty much in bed for like two or three days. 
and Animal Crossing like came out like a month or two before, and I was just like, I can't move, <laughs> but my thumbs can. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. so, like, I just played Animal Crossing on my little portable Switch, and Leslie would play on her like n- a normal Switch, and yeah, it was it was it was just nice. I always say like, yeah, I'm gonna break my leg, and that's when I'm gonna play like Final Fantasy VII or something like that. Too bad I'm an indestructible. I like I never get fucked up, man. I, I know I'm saying it out loud now; it's gonna happen, but like, yeah, yeah. like I would. Work well, time, work I'm, I understand that because I haven't been sick since like quarantines like two and a half years so yeah. like i mean i haven't been sick in like three years and then i got fucking covid so i got the sick of sick uh, you never got covid right Bobby? no not yet <laughs> knock on wood <laughs> yeah he's goddamn robots I, my covid dude uh, not not a fun time i felt like shit for like six days hmm. was, mm. not fun dude yeah the, 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 the most significant, like the strongest symptom I had was like fatigue. Just like I'd be walking around feeling just like normal shit. And then I'm like, I felt like those ladies in like old timey cartoons that would pass out like, <laughs> when I, like th- oh, save me, Leslie. She's like, I'm working. <laughs> the same thing that I, that's how I explained it when I got it, dude. You would feel kind of okay because you've been laying around. You'd be like, okay, I'm going to try to get something done. And I remember taking a half load of laundry upstairs. And I was done for 24 hours, dude. Like, I, so much fatigue. It, it, yeah, it's rough. That's, the, that's all the adulting for 24 hours. I, yeah, I don't know who said it, but somebody said it. And it's a, an epic quote. Uh, fatigue makes cowards of us all. Like, you just can't do shit when you're fatigued, man. It's fucking, it's not tired. It's a whole new level. All right, last question from Orconius. How's the Steam Deck going? Still using it consistently? I got mine, and it's been perfect for emulation and playing games on the go, uh, for games on the go that I want to complete. Control runs beautifully on it, and I discovered how good Celeste is. Oh. Um, No, I'm not using consistently because uh, the way construction works is you start off really slow and nothing's going on for several months maybe almost a year, and then it slowly starts to ramp up, and we're, right now we're at the apex of craziness. Um, but I hope, I'm You're pretty sure. that elevator button extra? No, no elevator work this time, man, uh, unfortunately. No, it yeah, it sucks. Um, God, we made so much goddamn money on those elevators. But, um, yeah, because I got paid more when I was just sitting on a bucket in an elevator. Was it like hazard pay or something? No, it was just, you know, it's a different union. They make different wages, and we match the union. So, yeah, it didn't happen. Um, so, I'm making money the hard way. Um, so, yeah, we're at peak right now. And probably a month. Well, yeah, it's going to start going down a little bit. Hopefully, hopefully. Uh, like next week is a three day work week for me, so that's I'm hmm. really looking forward to that. JP Diddy's coming to town on Thursday. Uh, he's going to be staying with me. We're going to party it up, uh, strip strippers, cocaine, you know that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, I haven't played because I'm so goddamn busy. Ninety hour work week, guys. Like it's easy to say, not hard to do or hard to do. Uh, my like you can tell by the way I was talking, my brain is mush. Right now, and nothing was making sense. I was in charge of twenty people today, and I was barely, barely doing a good job. I think we'll see. All right. Man. Well, what's everybody right. playing next week? I'm gonna try to play more chivalry. I'm gonna be. I, I'm already playing uh, Tarkov as it is when my friends play, but I want to get into chivalry because there's so many new players because it just got onto Steam. So it wasn't on Steam. No. Is it what, Epic? It was on Epic, yeah. Oh, hmm. interesting. All right. Well, I'm probably going to pick up where I left off last week and hopefully play Man Eater. That should happen, but... Hots. Uh, <laughs> no, the, the people that I've reconnected with, with Hots, they were talking about playing Apex Legends.